So far in dynamics, we've dealt with using F equals ma, resolving forces in the direction of acceleration and perpendicular to it, and we've started including some friction. Now, just to make life a little bit more tricky, it's no longer going to be a horizontal surface that we're dealing with, but we're going to put that on a slope. So that's what we're going to be looking at with the inclined plane topic. So this is the kind of resolving that we've done so far. We've had a force that's acting on an angle, and we've resolved it into the x and the y directions. So we've made ourselves a right angle triangle. The y component will be 15 sine 31, and the x component would be 15 cos 31. Okay, the main force, which is the 15 newtons, we've always had on the hypotenuse. So that's a really key point to make that the hypotenuse is the main force, and we're going to use that even on the inclined plane. So now we'll use that knowledge to approach our first example, which in this case is a 4 kilogram green ball on an inclined plane, and the incline is 20 degrees relative to the horizontal, as you can see on the diagram. As with the examples that we've done on a flat horizontal surface, we're going to start off by drawing all of the forces acting on the particle. So it's a 4 kilogram ball, so we know for sure that we've got a downwards force due to weight. So that's going to be 4g newtons acting downwards. We also know that we've got a normal force, and this is where we've got to remember that the normal force always acts 90 degrees to the surface. So in this case, our normal is going to act 90 degrees to that surface there. So those are the main forces that we've got involved here. Take a little bit of note that it says smooth there, remembering from our friction topic that if it says smooth, it means we've got no friction. So it's sort of a nice one to start off with. We haven't got that to deal with as well. So we've drawn our forces on so far, and now we're getting back to the point where we're going to need to highlight an awful lot of the things that we're doing to make it clear. So when we go through resolving our forces, this time, if we have a look at the standard technique, we're going to go in the parallel and in the perpendicular directions to the slope. So parallel to the slope, the weight would have a component going in that direction there. We're also going to consider which way the arrows are going to go on those components. So from the green ball, we know that gravity forces it downwards, so the individual arrows on the components have got to force it to go in that same direction. So it will be that way for our perpendicular component and that way for the parallel component, so that no matter which way you follow the arrows, you always start from the green dot and end up at the bottom of the arrow there. Okay, so now we're going to go on to stage two, which is highlighting our parallel and perpendicular components. So I'm going to highlight everything parallel to the slope in red. So that's just going to be this component across here. And then I'm going to do the same with my perpendicular components. So I've got a perpendicular component there, and I've got a perpendicular component of the weight there. I'm going to have a blue equation and a red equation, very similar to before. Now, the only thing that's going to be tricky at the moment is resolving the components of weight, as we haven't got any angles in that triangle. We can see straight away that it's a right-angled triangle, because it's between the parallel and perpendicular components, but you might not quite have considered that the angle up here is also 20 degrees, due to our angles between parallel lines. So that one up there is going to help us to resolve our blue and red components of the weight. So I'm going to come up with an equation of red and an equation of blue, and then I'm going to look to see which one of those is going to be helpful to me in answering the question, which is to calculate the acceleration of the ball. So first of all, I'm going to resolve parallel to the slope, going down the slope. So I've got 4g, and it's opposite that angle of 20, so 4g sine 20, and that's equal to the mass, which is 4 times acceleration. Okay, So acceleration is going to be acting parallel to the slope, so I can put that onto my diagram as well. Now I'm going to go for my perpendicular components. So I'm going to signify that by drawing an arrow going up and having a small right angle in between those two lines to show that they're perpendicular. The arrow shows that I'm taking top left 
of my perpendicular direction rather than top right. Okay, so now I've got the normal minus 4g cos 20, and that's equal to the mass times acceleration. However, as the ball isn't going to be flying through the surface or away from the surface, it's very similar to the vertical bit that we've had before, where acceleration is zero. Okay, so we're trying to find the acceleration. So looking at these two formulae, it looks as if the red one's going to be handy for us to do that with. So we can simplify that equation a little bit by cancelling the fours. So a is just going to be equal to g sine 20. So we'll plug that into our calculator, and then we can say therefore a is equal to 3.35 metres per second squared. So just to recap there, we resolved all of our forces on the diagram, parallel and perpendicular to the slope. Then we highlighted them in our blues and our reds. Then we wrote both equations, a parallel one and a perpendicular one. And only after we've done that did we look back at our equations and think which one is going to be the most helpful to solve the problem. I suggest attacking every one on an inclined plane like that. Okay, so here's our second example. We're again trying to calculate the acceleration of the block along the inclined plane. So we're going to have a 7 kilogram box, so we've got weights going down, 7g. 30 degrees is also going to be the same as the angle in there. This time, though, we have got to consider friction because we're given its coefficient. So we know that we're going to have f max acting up the slope there, and we've also got our normal force. So when we come to highlighting this time, we're going to have a little bit more to consider. We're going to have f max on our parallel component and a component of weight. That's going to be our red equation. And then we've got a component of weight and the normal which is going to affect our perpendicular direction. We'll also now make it really clear in our diagram which way we're expecting acceleration to happen, which is down the slope. So we'll come up with our two equations. So with our reds, we're going to be resolving parallel down the slope. So I've got 7g, it's the opposite the sine of the 30 angle, so it's 7g sine 30 and we're going to minus our f max. Now at this stage I'd put in the formula for f max straight away. So I know that the coefficient is 0 0.2, so that's going to be 0 0.2 times the normal. And that's equal to mass 7 times by the acceleration, which we don't know. Then we'll do our perpendicular components. So we've got the normal minus 7g cos 30, and again, remembering that the perpendicular acceleration is zero, that's going to be equal to seven lots of zero. So we've done step one, resolved. We've step two, we've highlighted, and I've come up with three equations, well, sorry, with two equations, parallel and perpendicular for step three. So now we can move on to solving. We're looking to calculate the acceleration of the block. So it looks as if the red equation is going to be handy to help us solve that. However, we can see from that that there's two unknowns. We don't know the normal or acceleration. So we're going to need to go to our blue equation first and solve to find n so we can put that in. So using that blue equation we will first of all find that n by rearranging is equal to 7g cos 30. So we'll pop that into the calculator and that's going to give us a value of 59.4 and now we can sub that into our red equation. So that's now going to give us 7g sine 30 minus 0 0.2 times 59.4 is equal to 7a and then we can find a by dividing everything there by 7. So 7 times 9.8 times by sine 30 minus 0 0.2 times 59.4 and we'll take all of that and divide it by 7 to give us a final result of 3.20 meters per second squared when rounded to three significant figures. Just make that negative sign a bit clearer. Okay, so not hugely more complicated but when you have got to deal with friction you're always going to need to calculate the normal first before you'll be able to calculate the acceleration. 
So we're getting progressively harder now. We've got an object of mass 20 kilograms, and it's on a rough plane. So we know from the word rough that there's going to be friction involved. It's also pushed by a horizontal force, so we're adding an extra force in this time. And we're told that the coefficient of friction is 0 0.3. Again, we're calculating the acceleration down the slope. So number one is to resolve everything into the parallel and perpendicular components. So we'll start off by putting weight nice and clearly on our diagram, 20g. We haven't got an angle on here yet, so if we look back through the question, we'll find that it's 25 degrees. So we can label that on as 25 degrees. So therefore, when we put our triangle around the weight, we know that that angle in there is going to be 25 degrees as well. Rough plane means that we've got friction acting up the slope, so that's going to be our F max. We've still got a normal acting at 90 degrees to the slope, and we're going to need to resolve that 10 in there. Now, looking at the 10 newtons and the baseline, you can see that there's alternate angles, so the angle here is going to be 25 degrees. Okay. If you're not quite sure about your angle rules, now would be a good time to just go and have a look on BBC Bite Size and just recap angles in a parallel line. Right, so we've resolved in all our directions, so now we'll go to highlighting each of the components. So perpendicular, we've got the normal, we've got a bit of the weight, and we've got a bit of the 10 newtons. And then parallel, we've got F max, we've got a bit of the 10 newtons, and we've got a bit of the weight. So we'll go for resolving perpendicular first this time. So clearly showing which way I'm resolving. So I've got n going upwards. If we have a look at the 10 newtons, we want to be able to go from the start of the arrow to the end of the arrow with our components. So it's going to be going down and then across. Therefore, the 10 newton component in red is going to be negative against my direction. 10 sine 25. And also the weight component is acting against my positive direction. So minus 20g cos 25. So that's all my forces. And as usual, that's equal to ma, so 20a. Remembering that in the perpendicular direction, acceleration is 0. So we can straight away put that on as 20 times 0. Then we're on to the blue direction. So we're going to resolve expecting again for acceleration to happen down the slope. So we've got 20g sine 25, that's our weight component acting down the slope, but everything else is actually against it. So it's going to be minus 0.3n for our friction, and also minus 10 cos 25 for that part of the 10 newton force. That's equal to ma again, so 20 times some acceleration going down the slope. So looking at our red equation, we're going to be able to solve that to find a value of n as our right hand side is equal to 0. So it's going to be 10 sine 25 plus 20 times 9.8 times cos 25 and that will give us 182 newtons for our normal force. We can therefore put that into the blue equation, replacing the n for the normal force with 182, and our final acceleration would therefore come out as 20 times 9.8 times sine 25, minus 0.3 times 182, minus 10 cos 25, and then all of that divided by 20. will come out to be a rather pathetically small acceleration of 0 0.959 metres per second squared. So far in these questions, we've always been trying to calculate the acceleration of the ball, but sometimes it might give you the acceleration and expect us to find something else, like the coefficient of friction, or in this case, the angle of inclination. If you're feeling more confident, pause the video now, and then when you think you've got the question finished off, then you can end pause it and I'll have done the diagram and we'll just talk through the final stages. So here's the completed diagram. I'm just going to go to resolving now. 
So I'm going to resolve parallel to the slope, getting 8g sine, and I've called my unknown angle theta. So 8g sine theta is equal to our mass of 8 times acceleration. But I do know acceleration in this case, so I can substitute that one straight in. Quite a useful thing to add onto the diagram. Then we'll do our red equation, going perpendicular to the slope. n minus 8g cos theta is equal to 8 times 0. So in this case, we're going to struggle to find very much without knowing theta in our red equation. But as we haven't got friction, we're less fussed about finding the normal. So we'll go straight up onto equation blue. So 8g sine theta, simplifying this a bit, is going to be equal to 40. We're trying to find theta, so I'm going to start by dividing by 8g. So I'm going to have sine theta equals 40 over hg. And remembering, if you want to find the angle, we're going to do the inverse of the trig, so sin minus 1 of 40 over hg. Giving us an angle of 30.7 degrees to three significant figures. Okay, last example, this time we're varying it slightly because we've got to calculate the coefficient of friction between the ball and the plane. So remembering when we did that in a flat surface, in order to calculate that coefficient, we need the normal and the frictional force at its maximum before we can calculate the coefficient. But we'll start off in a similar way. Again, I'll pause, and then if you're feeling confident, unpause it, and then you can just check your answer. So I've got my two equations, one in the perpendicular direction and one in the parallel. I'm going to start off by using my perpendicular equation and I'm going to take that to find my value for the normal, which is 37.5 newtons once we've rearranged. And the second thing that we need to calculate that coefficient is going to be f max. So looking at the formula which we've got for number 2, we can rearrange so that we'd end up with mu n equals 5g sine 40 minus the 5 times 3, which is 15. As we know n is 37.5, we can say that mu is equal to all of that there divided by the n value of 37.5, which will give us our final answer of 0 0.439 for the coefficient. Remembering there's no units on the coefficient because it's newtons divided by newtons.